Welcome to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Coming up, why you shouldn't count on getting a raise this year. Also, is LinkedIn the best place to find a partner? No. And more on the Worst of the Riot podcast. I, I wish Nene was here right now to see how he feels about the Dallas Cowboys. It's been announced. It's been reported by ESPN's Adam Schefter. That the Dallas Cowboys are bringing back their coach, Mike McCarthy. For another season. Nene, at least, as a Cowboys fan, was in here two days ago saying he wants everybody gone. Everybody except for Dak, for some reason. Uh, but it doesn't sound like, I mean, that was unrealistic any, unrealistic anyways. But one of the top candidates to go, Mike McCarthy, sticking around. What do you make of it, Isaiah, as a neutral party? As a neutral party, I think it's fine to keep Mike McCarthy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a good coach. I assume that the only reason that the Cowboys would keep Mike McCarthy is because they don't think they could land probably mm. like a Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. If they were interested in Mike Rabel, maybe they don't think they could land a Mike Rabel. Yeah. And so if they're convinced that they're not going to land either of those guys or a Jim Harbaugh, then you should keep Mike McCarthy. I think that this is going to seem really smart about 11 months from now when the Cowboys are like 10 and three and hot dogging through the regular season, possibly likely on their way to winning the division again. But then one year from now, I don't know when the next, the Sunday of the divisional round of the playoffs has come, but one year from now, it's going to look really silly again. But is, does it look silly though? Is it his fault? Did, did it look silly on Sunday? But whose fault is that? That his team lost by 30 points? He was woefully unprepared. Yeah, you got to blame the coach for that. You got to blame the coach for two interceptions? Like, what are we talking about? Your team was uh, was hot dog and grandstanding on offense all year. And then what happens in the first quarter? You almost get, sh or the first half, you almost get shut out. See, I think this is the more. The defense of the other team scores more points than your offense. See, I think this is more. You can never, I don't think you can put a blowout on a coach. I think a blowout always lands more on the players. Because in my mind, immediately, I mean, if you say they're unprepared, they're unprepared, whatever it is. But in my mind, immediately, a blowout's always just a poor performance. Like, it's not his fault that the Cowboys were horrible mm -hmm. on Sunday. Like, they were just bad. Like, you just have a bad day. Like, there's a lot of teams this weekend that got blown out. But in my mind, everybody's, I mean, Mike McCarthy, he gets shredded. He gets absolutely shredded every year for no reason. But the, one of the statistics that I saw that I really liked, which they call Mike McCarthy, is many a times the butt of many jokes. Yeah. But everyone loves Mike Tomlin. Everybody loves him. Uh -huh. Everybody thinks Mike Tomlin should stay in Pittsburgh, and the Pittsburgh media is ridiculous for thinking that he's gone. They're thinking that he should go. But if you look at them side by side... Mike McCarthy is a more successful coach than Mike Tomlin, which is insane. It's insane. And so Mike Tomlin, record 173 and 100. Mike McCarthy, career record, 167 and 102. Mike Tomlin, 8 and 10 in the playoffs. Mike McCarthy, 11 and 11 in the playoffs. They both have one Super Bowl. One's a genius, and the other guy is, should get fired every year. It's unbelievable to me that they are taken in such different lights. Even though Mike Tomlin and the Steelers, I mean, the past couple of years have not been so hot, but his teams with Big Ben and AB and the best defense in the league, yeah. he was getting absolutely carried year in and year out. Put them side by side, and I think that uh, Mike McCarthy, pretty good coach, pretty good coach, but that's just how Dallas is. It all depends on your aspirations, and if your aspirations are to lose in the first round of the playoffs every year, Mike McCarthy's your guy. Well, you know what? If you're making the playoffs every year, you should be a pretty grateful franchise. <laughs> Never expired a better. You should be a politician. Hey, I'm just saying. I mean, not, you're going to win the Super Bowl one time every 15 years, and that's pretty good. And Mike McCarthy has won a Super Bowl one time in the last 15 years. That's pretty good. Do yourself a favor and follow The Riot on Instagram at Radio U Riot. I have a movie in mind that I'm pretty sure it's, it's one of the big bombs of all time. I really feel like it. Would have gotten nominated for a Razzie, but also real big budget. It was a bomb. It was supposed to be real good. I feel like it could have somehow snuck in an Oscar nomination as well. I will say Waterworld. Correct. Yeah. You and a couple other texters like Derek texted that one in correctly. I had to rack my brain on that one. Let's do some rapid fire. 
Kevin Costner won an Oscar for which of these films? Bull Durham. Dances with Wolves. JFK. I believe the Oscars loved Dances with Wolves for some reason. Very good. Yeah, I know my Oscars. Before hitting it big, Kevin Costner worked at what major tourist attraction? Universal Studios. Mm. So very close. He actually worked at Disneyland as Skipper of the Jungle Cruise. Ah. You were you were very close. So many get their start. How about this one? We all remember Draft Day, a personal favorite of oh, mine. Yeah. Kevin Costner stars in that one as Sonny Weaver Jr., which was a movie circled around the Cleveland Browns on uh -huh. Draft Day. But the movie wasn't actually supposed to be centered around the Browns, but because the production costs in Ohio were so cheap, <laughs> they switched from what team to the Cleveland Browns? What other team would they make this movie about? The Detroit Lions. Hmm. It was actually supposed to be the Buffalo Bills. Interesting. But Ohio was cheaper, huh? Cleveland was a cheap city to make the movie in, I guess. What's your and it feels like it fits the Browns. That was a, yeah. a time for us where we were kind of struck. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. What's your favorite Kevin Costner movie? Draft Day. Good, good choice. I love Draft Day. Even though I know a lot of people didn't love it, because it was circled around my Browns, it made it so much better. Yeah, I think, uh, no, that's, that's a good answer. It's actually underrated. I'll say uh, eh, Field of Dreams. Why not? Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams. Good, good movie. That's a good, that's a good one. All right, that's your useless knowledge. Happy birthday, Kevin Costner. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. If you've already given up on your New Year's resolution to get in better shape in 2024, that's okay. Hitting the gym, staying fit, it's difficult. But I have two new options here that might feel a little more realistic, a little more reasonable for you to help you achieve your fitness goals. There's two things going around. One is a study that shows the benefits of dancing as a weight loss technique. Listen to this, Isaiah. Uh, according to this new study, those who chose to do dancing as like their main exercise showed meaningful positive changes in body mass waist size, and fat mass also benefited from lower blood pressure and improved mental health. You got to get up and get dancing. You got to be like Napoleon Dynamite out there. Just shed some pounds. Where are people dancing? The beauty of dancing is you can do it anywhere. You don't need weights. You don't need a treadmill. All you need is to get up and start grooving. See, in my mind, I think, how long can you dance by yourself for? It is tough. It is tough to dance, um, whether with yourself or with anybody else. Um, it takes a lot out of you, which shows why it's such a good, it's such a good exercise. Because if you're really dancing, it is gonna, you're going to get tuckered out quickly. See, because it makes me question, right? Mm -hmm. You know how, as, I, I have a good theory for this, yeah. as the years have gone on, the U.S. of A. got a little fatter, correct or incorrect? That is accurate, yep. But I feel as if it's because less people, when they go out on the weekends, mm. right? Because you think back in the day, like the 70s. Yeah. Known for what? Disco. That's right. 80s rock, hard rock. Sure. And so on Hair the weekends, metal. people were going out and they were, they were discoing. You, you even go back to like whatever time it's a wonderful life came out and they were doing like the school day, you know, mm -hmm. like everybody was doing the Charleston and, and whatever. Like they had, they knew these dance moves you and that was like what you did. You'd stay out. It to seems like, like anyways, you would stay out all night dancing, uh -huh. getting sweaty. I, I mean, the guys had their shirts like unbuttoned down. They had the hair puffing out of the chest <laughs> and they're just covered in sweat with the Afros yeah, going. A different that time. Ex exercise in every Friday and Saturday night mm -hmm. between like 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. Nowadays, what are we doing? Not Hanging that. out. Not We're not that. dancing. Yeah, People not aren't that. dancing, man. 
So, but maybe, maybe dancing sounds a little daunting to you. It sounds like a little too much. But what about something you may already be doing and you just need to do more of it? And that's singing. Okay. There's also, listen to this. Okay. There's a trend going around on TikTok that, uh, that people have found in China that they'll go out and do karaoke. And if you actually like look at, do some karaoke, wear your Fitbit or your Apple Watch or whatever, look how many calories you burn. I've got somebody here. They sang for about an hour and a half. They burned 400 calories, over 400 calories in an hour and a half of singing. That, that's a lot of calories. Just singing. So you burn 400 calories doing karaoke for an hour and a half. And uh-huh. let me tell you, everybody at the karaoke bar hated you. Because you you hogged the mic the whole night. Yeah, what yeah. are you doing up but, there for an hour you, and a half? But, Nobody's that good. What I'm saying is, what's the most the most daunting thing for many people about working out is you have to go to the gym. You have to like leave your house and go out and do stuff. You can sing. You don't even have to. You don't have to leave your house. You don't even have to stand. Just put on a, your favorite playlist and just belt it out inside your own home for two hours and watch the pounds melt away. I don't know if I completely back that, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a quick way to lose your voice. I that, like it. That is true. Or make everyone in the karaoke bar hate you. <laughs> We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio you. Are you familiar on Facebook with the Are We Dating the Same Guy groups? I am familiar with this. This is uh, something that has sprung up. It's now, it's an international thing. Cities across, uh, cities and areas across the United States, into the UK, probably elsewhere, have got these things. It's, are we dating the same guy? It's where gals can privately share information on guys. And usually, I mean, sometimes it's nice stories, but a lot of times it's not. Uh, and now it's finally risen to the point where one guy is suing 27 million as well as it looks like meta, obviously the company that owns Facebook that's behind that hosts these groups. Uh, he's suing for $75 million, I guess, basically because in the, are we dating the same guy group for his area, Chicago, he got branded as a clingy guy, these 27 women that I guess that he knows, uh, they had shared some information on him, shared quotes like, I went out with him a few times over a year ago. He told me what I wanted to hear until I split with him, and then he ghosted. I'd steer clear. Or another person, another woman that said, very cling, very fast. And so this reputation, I guess, stuck to him, clinged to him, some might say. And I guess he's had a hard time overcoming it in the dating scene. So he's suing the women responsible. I've seen this story posted about. Mm-hmm. I'm very familiar with the Are We Dating the Same Guy Facebook groups. How oh, did you wind up on there? No, <laughs> a lot of my, my girlfriends uh, talk about that, though, yeah. that they're in those groups and stuff for the uh-huh. city. And which are hilarious. They they look at it as just comedy. Yeah. Because it's really funny to see the guys that get posted in there. Yeah. And um, there is like there's there's rules, like they're moderated and yeah. stuff. There's supposed you can't to be just stuff. like trash guys in there. No, and like I I I understand that uh like you're not supposed to use full names and stuff like that, but then again, if you're a gal and you see a guy you recognize and there's bad stuff about him, you're gonna be able to connect the dots and figure it out. The question here is, does this man have a case? Yeah. Ah, it's tough. He's looking for defamation here. I guess. He has to prove that he's not clingy. <laughs> How can you do that? In a How do you law? prove that? I don't know. He's going to need text messages from this girl, from, from any of these 70, or what is it, 27 women? 27. Women for <laughs> saying that he's not clingy. I don't know how he's going to prove that. 27. People is a lot to disprove too. Like if it was one or two gals, and then that just like gave you the reputation. Then you could be like, well, you know, like the the few don't necessarily speak for the many. 
But that's 27. You got 27 ladies lined up that all had negative stories about you. It does start to turn into a little bit of a snowball effect here. But then I'm like, they're just calling him clingy. It's not that yeah. they're saying anything no, really yeah. bad about him. They're just like calling him clingy. Uh-huh. And so then I'm like, is he just getting piled on, you know? Yeah. Like, did one girl see it, and then another one post it, and the other one's like... This now is, that you mention it... You know what? Maybe he was clingy. Yeah. Like, it's not like they're saying anything truly bad about him. Well, then, can you sue somebody for saying something that's not truly bad about you? I mean, if it was, like, three girls that said this, that'd be one thing. At 27, mm-hmm. he's probably like, what? He, in his mind, mm-hmm. he's probably like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> it, would you, it would be confusing. everyone... That but, I went on a date with in the past three years is on this same site, on this same Facebook group, and they all think I'm clingy? How's that possible? Then I think he needs to look in the mirror and say maybe he is a little clingy. Uh, yet again, 27. If it was one or two, that's one thing. 27? Maybe uh, the numbers don't lie. You also got to think, too. This guy, he's 32. He's from Chicago. Every woman in Chicago is not, every single woman is not on the, are we dating the same guy? You just gotta, I don't know. You gotta just stay out there. Stay, put your head down, stay the course, stop clinging to people. I think you need to quit it for a while. He needs to. You need to take a cool break, buddy. Yeah. 27 women are calling you clingy. That is a lot. Maybe we need to just cool it on the dating apps for a little bit. Take like a six month break Mm -hmm. from going on dates for a while. (laughs) And just figure out like a Let hobby the dust or something. Settle, yeah. Figure out a hobby first. And then that way maybe you'll be. I have. I have. I have. You are actually clingy. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio you. How it works is it's going to be basically a fantasy draft between Isaiah and I. We have one chosen topic. We each get three picks, snake draft style, to choose on that given topic. And then you decide which of us come up with a better team, a better selection, and let us know which choices we missed on. Today's topic, all about the best days of school. Since this is a time where people are in school. Uh, Isaiah, you have the first pick. I will say... From the jump that I am at a decided disadvantage since I was homeschooled. So, that being said, I did some research. I talked to some school children. I was asked to leave. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I had, to, I had to be informed and ready for this choice champions. So, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared. I've done you my, need to stay away from I've my children. I've done my homework. You need to stay away from our children. All right. Go ahead and go first. My first overall pick, best days at school, is the last day of school. The final day of the calendar. Mm -hmm. Everybody's real excited. It's about to be summer break. Yeah. There's a million things that go into the last day of school. We could do a whole segment about it because it's such a fantastic day. I have a million thoughts on it, but I'll just leave it as the last day of school. Mm, I'm bummed. I had that as my number one. It's a pretty great day. (laughs) But I think there's a lot of depth in this category in the best days of school. And so I'm glad to have the number two and three picks, which I will use on snow days, of course, and field trip day. You get to go on a field trip. Everybody's in a good mood, right? Have a good time. Get to get out of the confines, the dark fluorescent lighting of the school and get into some something more interesting, possibly, or just goof off. While somebody talks about dinosaur or skeletons, whatever. Field trip day. Very good days. Mm-hmm. Those are good days. Yeah. Told I'm you gonna, I did my homework. I'm going to follow it up with the first day of school. Okay. Is my next pick. There's nothing better on the first day of school than getting to go to your classes for the first time. Uh-huh. See which of your friends are in your classes, maybe... A cute girls in your classes. <laughs> Very exciting. And you're like coming back from summer break. Everyone's excited to see each other. Your school friends that you don't get to see during the summertime because they don't live on the same side of town as you. You get to be reunited once again. You get one more choice, by the way. Oh, my next choice. <laughs> <laughs> and then my final choice, uh-huh. I'm going to do the day before Christmas break. Ooh. 
That's kind of doubling down on the last day, isn't it? I know, but the day, before, the day before Christmas break is a good day because all you do is watch movies. It's like Christmas movies. Yeah. It's Christmas time. Everybody's excited. It's hard for me to go against the day before Christmas break because you're just excited for Christmas break, and you need a break at that point. Mm. You're probably done with all of like your exams and things like that. You're just sitting around ready for Christmas time. I'm going the day before Christmas break. All right. I've got a tough one here because I could kind of double down – on one of my two choices, or I could go super elementary school focused with my final pick. I am going to go super elementary school focused. I'm taking book fair day. Book it's fair fun, day. fun to leave with something fun to have a fistful of dollars and leave with something that you didn't come with a poster. Yeah. That's I always get a poster. That was my go to. Yeah. There's always some kid who's like stealing erasers or something. <laughs> You Keep learn, an eye on him. It's uh, your first chance to learn how to budget properly. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Uh, the best days of school. Isaiah, your team is? Uh, my team is the last day of school, the first day of school, and then the day before Christmas break. Not a lot of variety. Uh, nope. My team is snow days, field trips, and book fair. Which of us has a better team? And what did we miss? 8772 Radio U. We'll see what people are saying next. There's never been a can of worms they didn't open. The Riot, Radio U. In the midst of Choice Champions today, all about the best days of school. Isaiah, you had the first pick. Your team was? The last day of school. The first day of school. In the day before Christmas break. And I have snow days. I have field trip. And I have book fair. And so the texts are rolling in. Switz texted saying, also based on elementary school, what about field days we missed out on? I considered field day. We did field day in homeschool. We would go Stop. to field day. Uh, but Your I homeschooling also, experiences I always understand. just tickle me. Field day is uh, typically very similar to like the last day of school, right? Yeah. Like similar or that is field day. Well, it depends on, it depends on the age. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there's field days that are throughout the school year mm-hmm. that I remember. I was trying to remember field day. I, I don't know how. I couldn't remember what that was called. Oh, yeah, I was like, what was day. that day where we were all like outside? You had, to wear the, you had to wear your red shoes, right? We were like playing. Uh-huh, your play shoes. Yeah. And <laughs> I was like, what day was that? Field day. Now I remember. Thank you. Uh, Switz also says that school uh, snow days don't count because they're not technically in school. But I was basing mine off of the expectation of any day you're scheduled to be in school. And so I'd say snow days count. Um, and we make the rules. Susanna, homeschooling, uh, so I identify, hold on a second, (laughs) homeschooling, so I identify with none of these, my favorite was being done by noon every day, so we got a fellow homeschooler, I didn't know that about Susanna, she takes it all the time, a fellow homeschooler. You know what the best day of homeschooling was? What was the best day? All of them, because... You didn't do anything. Sleep in and, yeah, not actually learn anything. Uh, Let's see... Todd says, sorry, Hudson, you lost me at book fair day. Oh, you don't like to read, Todd? <laughs> you don't like to spend money? Um, you know, the, best, the only good thing about book fair day, for me, book fair day was, the worst thing about book fair day, though, uh-huh. was there was always a kid whose parents gave him way too much money. And if you're that parent, what are you doing? <laughs> Giving your kid, like, if, if someone showed up with a $20 ba- a bill uh-huh. to book fair day, I was like, your parents must be crazy out of their mind to give you 20 bucks. How many books are you going to buy here that you're not going to read? Like, that's just insane. Yeah. Uh, I would show up with like two bucks. I'm like, what can I get with this? I can get an eraser and a smencil. Good enough for me. Smencil. Uh, Carrie says, both good lists, but I've got to go with Hudson. Good Uh, pick. Isaiah, what else on your list? What didn't quite make the cut for you? Um, Some of the ones that I considered were the day your class schedule came out. Okay. This is more towards middle school and high school, but I guess for, for elementary school too, uh, the day you find out what like what day your teacher, who your teacher was going to be that year. Mm-hmm. Um, that was very exciting because then back when I was in school, we would all post our class schedules yeah. to Facebook. Oh. And then people would comment and be like, I'm also in third period PE. That was really... That does sound exciting. That was a really exciting yeah. day. Kind of a slept on day. It's obviously not during the school year. 
but that was a great day. I also thought about substitute teacher day. Mm -hmm. You see a substitute teacher in there, especially for me too, because one of the substitute teachers was my friend's dad. Oh yeah. And whenever he was in there, Daddy Dave, whenever he was in a substitute teacher, we just watched movies. We did nothing. That Shout was out. awesome. And then the other Shout one out was to Daddy Dave. Daddy Dave. And the other one was uh, special lunch day. And so and when what does I was, that mean? When I was in like kindergarten, yeah, we would do this like pizza day, and there was this pizza song that mm -hmm. you sang. Um, and so that was that was special enough to where I remember it twenty some years later. Let me throw out a couple others that you might not have considered uh, clearly because you didn't list them. Sick day. I thought of a lesser version of a snow day because you're at least sick enough that, you know, you don't want to go to school. But I guess a lot of days you don't want to go to school. But you might, depending on how strict your parents were, too, then it was like, well, if you're too sick to go to school, you're too sick to do anything fun, lie in bed. But even lying in bed sometimes better than school. Also, what do you think about this? Birthdays. Whether your birthday or someone else's, especially elementary school, you you... But uh, birthday, if it's somebody else's, you might leave with some goodies, some a lollipop or something, some erasers. You're, you seem big on erasers, so. But that time I was. You get a cool eraser. For yeah. me, I despise birthday days because I had a summer birthday. Ooh. So if it was your birthday during the school year, yeah. you got to be line leader. You got all the festivities. Mm -hmm. I was in, like, the corner of the room just despised you. You just resented the I was days. so jealous. I was like, my birthday's in July. This is ridiculous. Why does Andrew get to be line leader just because he was born in October? <laughs> Silly. Well, uh, I'm landing up all the votes here. It looks like I've actually won fair and square. Would you look at that? Choice champions. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. Emily says pep rally day. Way pep. underrated day. Underrated. A great day. Pep rally day is awesome, especially if it's like a true pep rally like i was talking to hudson i said that if your sports team like at our school mm -hmm. if our football team went to like the second round of the playoffs and we were having to travel somewhere far away uh -huh. then the football team didn't even have to come to school on pep rally day you would just come to the pep rally get on the bus and travel to the game the school you got the school got out early so that you could go to the game oh what a great day pep rally day but not good enough to make your list though I completely forgot about it, but that's a good one, Emily. That's <laughs> that is, a good one. That's a good one. It. That wasn't as uh, elementary school focused either. Although school <laughs> is more fun in elementary school. I think that everybody probably agrees with that. Uh, you know, it's that time of year. Love is in the air. And people are looking for love. And one place that apparently a lot of people are looking for love, LinkedIn. A new survey here. This is unbelievable to me says that 52% of singles that were surveyed have used LinkedIn as a dating site. I've heard this thrown around before. I thought it was a niche thing. I thought, oh, a few people, a few weirdos have tried to find a date on LinkedIn. 52% of people, that's more than a few. Yeah, that's way too many. What are we doing? LinkedIn? Yeah. This is supposed to be professional. What are we thinking? This makes no sense to me. You're not supposed to mix business and pleasure, right? You're not. And LinkedIn is all business. It's all, it's all numbers, research, marketing yourself, uh, networking. It's not supposed to be romance. It's not made for that. I don't understand this. I, I just, I'm confounded. By the idea, all of the dating apps out there, and none of them are good enough for you. Instead, you have to turn to LinkedIn. Why? Why would you do that? Why? I don't mean to slide in your in your DMs in here. Do you have any? Do you have any openings at your work? Do you mind if I take you out for maybe a a work lunch? I'll give you my my card. No, this doesn't sound problematic at all. It seems as if we're maybe in the in the same industry. <laughs> Maybe we should get together sometime. That in common. You've caught my eye on uh -huh. here. We're both open to work. <laughs> Maybe we could work out. Would you like to meet a coffee shop for an interview, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are people thinking? If you slide into someone's DMs on, on LinkedIn, you're immediately going to come across as super creepy. There's no chance, right? Yeah, it's too right? much. It's too much. What you can do with this, you know what? If you want to be weird, mm. this is the way you do it. Let me help you. Um, 
if you want to, if you want to try to slide into somebody's DMs uh-huh. on LinkedIn because you somehow came across their profile and you're like, wow, they're really attractive. Yeah. You need to go to another. You need to take it to another platform. Mm-hmm. You need to follow on Instagram. You need to follow they've got them to have on. It. If they're into LinkedIn, they've got their Instagram connected to it. You right? need to go to Instagram and mm-hmm. you need to friend them or you need to follow them. Yeah. See if they follow you back and then you can DM them on there. Do not DM someone on LinkedIn. Go take it from there to another social network, please. It's gonna get. It's gonna be way more likely that it works out. It doesn't even. It doesn't even, because uh, again. I go back to when I had seen LinkedIn mentioned as a dating possibility before. I thought that was I thought that was a few people were doing it. And then it's like, well, if you're the only person using it for that or the only message that somebody gets uh, in a romantic sense is from you, then it feels like you have a leg up because you're not fighting a million other people. And there's not a lot of competition. But if it's half of all singles, then there is a lot of competition. And then you might as well just take it to somewhere. Where you're, where people are already expecting that type of thing. Like someone's like looking for a job, they get a message in their DMs on LinkedIn. Yeah. They're like, "Whoa, I'm about to get yes. a, I'm about to get an opportunity." And then it's just some weird guy like, "Hey, I came across your profile and you looked really pretty." And like you're like, "What the heck is this, dude? I'm looking for a job uh-huh. here. What are we doing?" Yeah, I'm not into this, not at all. Hudson is the maple syrup, and Isaiah is the power protein flapjack. This is the riot on Radio U. The Guinness World Records book has been thrown entirely into question here in recent days after the record holder for the world's oldest living dog had his title suspended posthumously. You may have seen popping around uh, a, a bit ago, Bobby who had been the world's oldest dog. Bobby recently passed away, but Bobby, before he had passed away, lived supposedly to be 31 years and 165 days old. Old dog. Very old dog. That is a very old dog. That was enough to get him the Guinness World Record for the world's oldest dog. However, since his death, that title has been suspended after it's been thrown into question. Uh, On the dogs subreddit, many refuse to believe that Bobby, the purebred Raffiero de Alentejo, could possibly have lived to this age. When you consider that the previous world record holder for oldest dog only lived to be 23 years and seven days old. That's quite a jump, quite a leap. Not only did the dogs subreddit find it hard to believe, but so do vets. Take, for example, Danny Chambers of the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons in the UK, who said, this is the equivalent of a human living to over 200 years old, which, given our current medical capabilities, is completely implausible. Seems as if they don't believe it. And for me, to say the least, I can't. 31. Mm -hmm. I mean, it sounds old for a dog, obviously. Twice the normal age that many a dogs live. 15 years, yeah, would be considered a very long long life for many dogs, yes. 31 years seems kind of unbelievable. And this dog, Bobby, he looks good. He looks younger than my dog, Jim, Mm -hmm. at his last, in his last photos. And so when I look at this dog, I'm like, 31, but who is to say that he isn't? Does he have a birth certificate? Yeah, you don't get birth certificates for dogs, do they? I have a birth certificate for Jim. You do? Yeah. But how do we? How official is that? As official as the breeder that gave it to me. Is March the, 1st. That's when he was born. Is the government involved? Is there any, is, was it certified somehow? Uh, well, is he it provable? Is, Could see, you forge it? I think, well, my thing is, is he is in like the AKC, I believe it's called, mm-hmm. that tells me that he's like a purebred oh, basset yeah. hound. Uh-huh. That's kind of official. And he said he was born on March 1st. So for Jim, I can prove that he's about to turn three years old. Mm -hmm. Now, Bobby, on the other hand. It is coming up. Um, Bobby, on the other hand, can we really prove that he's 31 years old? I lean probably not. Well, it seems that it had to be somewhat provable because Guinness World Records, they don't just 
I know there's a world record for everything, but they don't just hand them out. Even the stupidest things, they have to send some kind of person to like observe or whatever. So this had to face some kind of scrutiny before they handed this record out. Uh, but now it's under even more scrutiny, so much so that Guinness has had to suspend the title of world's oldest dog. I also do ask, though, why? Why at this point? The dog's dead. Who cares this much? Why are you using your time, your valuable time, devoting your life to be smirching this dog's reputation after his death? Let him, let him rest in peace, is what I say. But don't That's you, what I say. But don't you think the owners of the dog who lived to be 23 years old and mm. seven days old, mm. they're looking for answers. Others <laughs> claim... <laughs> They had found earlier photos of Bobby uh -huh. that showed a different dog with white paws. Mm. Who's to say? Who is to yeah. say? Yeah, was it a, was Bobby, was this a goldfish situation? Somebody came back from school one day. Bobby's fine. You see her. He's looking much better, actually. He's actually moving really well. Yeah. For being uh, 20 years old. Yeah. He's moving really good. Uh-huh. He's got a new sparkle in his eye. Man, I just hope we can clear this whole thing up and either clear Bobby's good name or not. Can you imagine if your dog lived to 31? Yeah. Holy moly. You don't always have to agree with Isaiah to always disagree with Hudson. The Riot. Radio U. When you were a kid, did you have a trampoline? I did not. Did you have a pool? I did not. Did you have friends? That were really only your friends because they had a pool or a trampoline. I'm trying to think. I wasn't really around trampoline people. Uh-huh. Not any of my friends. You weren't did. a trampoliner? No, they didn't have trampolines. Uh -huh. And even pools. My friends didn't really have pools either. Mm-hmm. Were me and my friends poor? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of sounded like it. Sounds like we might have been poor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I did go to like the the pool in my town a lot, uh -huh. but I didn't really have any friends that had a pool or trampoline, <laughs> that had a pool or trampoline growing up. I had, I was thinking back, eventually we got our own trampoline. Which, Money patch. Yeah, that's right. No wonder we're hey, so different. We had a pool too. Oh uh, my God. But, but before we had oh our trampoline, gosh. there was, my neighbor had a trampoline and my neighbor, uh, I'll, I'll sell him out. His name was Garrett. We did not like Garrett. Garrett was not a fun kid to be around, but he had a trampoline. We love Garrett. Yeah. And so Garrett, somehow we found a way to tolerate Garrett. And uh, Garrett, uh, before you go feeling too bad for him, he like brought a lot of this on himself. Uh, it's not like we mistreated him or anything. We hung did around with him. him? No. <laughs> we did not bully Garrett, but we did go use his trampoline a lot, and uh, we probably liked the trampoline a little more than we liked Garrett, the next door neighbor. Uh, but you know, when you think about that, you like if you've ever been on the receipt, if you've ever been Garrett in this transaction, uh, that it pro it may not be a very good feeling. I don't know how attached Garrett was to us. Uh, I feel like he he kind of wasn't super attached either. It's just we were neighbors, so whatever. But uh, if it like if you're the person with the trampoline, and then your neighbors finally they get their trampoline, and now they don't want to hang out with you because they're on their own trampoline, they don't need you anymore. I mean that sucks, right? It, that does stink. That that's not a good feeling. And who wants to experience that? But in life, there are you're gonna have probably a lot of friendships as you go through that are more about the trampoline than they're actually about you. Uh, more and more, you're just, the, the friendships come and go because of convenience, because of how it can benefit one side of the, of, the, of the friendship, but not necessarily both. But the friendships that truly matter are the ones that aren't based around a trampoline or a pool or like having a cool car, or, you know, a, a, having a lot of money when you grow up that people uh, want to be around you and they're your friends because of that. Those aren't the friendships that matter. The friendships that matter are the ones that stay tried and true through all of the ups and downs, through the thick and thin, through the trampolines and the no trampolines. But those friendships are much harder to come by. Somebody that will be with you through it all. But I'm telling you right now that one place you can find a relationship like that is with God. Because the truth is, when you have a relationship with Jesus, 
it's really, it doesn't, God loves it, but it's not to benefit him. He doesn't need you, but he wants you. Jesus loves you so much that he wants to have a relationship with you, even though you don't have a trampoline that he can borrow. You don't have a pool that he can just come over and use whenever he wants. That's how much God loves you. And if that's a relationship you're looking for, that's a relationship you can have simply by saying, hey, God, I'm ready for that. I want to, to know what it's like to have a friendship, a relationship with you, to be able to count on you and turn to you whenever I need you and, uh, and not have to feel like I need to give you something in return. Jesus will do that for you. Find out straight from him. You want to know more, check out RadioU.com slash free gift. Do yourself a favor and follow The Riot on Instagram at Radio U Riot. Question. Uh-huh. What do you wear to bed? It's a little personal, don't you think? What do you wear to bed? Uh, it oscillates. It oscillates. It depends on how I'm feeling, how the weather is. I typically will probably wear a short, uh, a, a t-shirt and boxers. Like t-shirt and mm-hmm. boxers. Yes. Mm-hmm. See, that doesn't really tell me much about you. You weren't that, specific enough. What do you mean? Or are you more likely to sleep naked or in PJs? Jeez, get to the room. I never wear pajamas. Not a pajama guy. Yeah. That adds up. Uh, yeah, I don't do pajamas, but I never sleep fully naked either. So you would say that you're closer to a naked sleeper or a pajama Probably, sleeper? Probably, because I, I will do yeah. just boxers and nothing else, yeah. Well, let me tell you what that means. I'm glad everybody can picture that. I got a good They don't even know what here. I look like. It's a radio. <laughs> All right, well, it says to you, I got a survey saying that Americans who slept naked more likely to be confident. Ah, it adds up. Extroverted. Whereas pajama wears, Mm -hmm. and and by this survey, it kind of seems like pajama wears may, I can't tell who thinks they're better than who. (laughs) Pajama wears like to fall asleep early, watch TV, or listen to a podcast. Hmm. Seems like they think they're a little bit more put together than us naked naked sleepers. (laughs) When you say us naked sleepers, it sounds like you're a naked sleeper. I'm not a naked sleeper, mm-hmm. but I am much closer. You're a naked awaker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I, I, I sleep in, in my underwear usually, but I, I have pajamas that I recently that are got. actual pajamas. That I recently got. Mm-hmm. They're like pajama bottoms. I got them around Christmas time. Uh, my girlfriend got them for me because she's like, we should get matching PJs. Because she wants you to stop being naked? Or? <laughs> <laughs> we should get matching PJs to wear around Christmas time when we watch movies oh, and stuff, so right? Oh, so cute, yeah. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, and so I've I've slept a couple times with the PJs she got me. I've slept with those on, yeah. which are just bottoms. And even that, too hot for me. Yeah, I get too hot at night. I, I feel as if, especially, I can't believe you sleep with a shirt on. Yeah, sometimes. I feel as if when I sleep with a shirt on, I feel as if I'm being choked. I wake up in the middle of the night, and it just gets all it gets all wanky, and uh-huh. it gets all weird on me, and then all of a sudden I feel like I wake up in the middle of the night and somebody's choking me out. I'm trying to think what would be, what, what is better, a very loose a sleep shirt, some will refer to as like a shirt that's several sizes too big for yeah, you. Yeah, that's nice. Um, But I think that could get all like raveled up. Yeah. Uh, but then otherwise, then you're talking about a, a real tight shirt, but then it does feel a little constricting. I, I never want to sleep in anything tight. No, so, 100% no. Or like jeans. You ever slept in a pair of jeans? Well, the truth is I can, I can sleep in anything because I'm a tired individual, mm-hmm. but sleeping in jeans, obviously not comfortable. I have a friend who's spent the night in my house many a times, just mm-hmm. like we've been hanging out on the weekend. And he just stays. Yeah. And he is a jean sleeper on her. Mm-hmm. I'll come out in the morning and he'll, he'll stay on my couch and he's just wearing jeans. Now that is crazy. And I'm like, what? And he, he sleeps fully head to toe. Yeah. Like hoodie, jeans, just whatever he was wearing, he just wakes up in. And he says that a lot of times he falls asleep that way during the week in his own bed. Not even at, a, at, not even at your house. Not even just at my house. At his, in his own bed, he'll just wear whatever. If he was wearing like athletic shorts and a t-shirt, he'll just wear that to bed. That is, that is difficult for me. It's the jeans. I'd rather... Well, I guess I don't want to say that. But. Jamie wears also early birds enjoy drama and mystery movies and are less likely than naked sleepers to have nightmares. Hmm. Now that's something I want to coincide with. I want to avoid naked nightmares. nightmares. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a horrible TV show. Yeah, that was uh, a nickname I've had in the past. There's never been a can of worms they didn't open. The Riot Radio U.
You know, it might not feel like it, but you know, over the last few years, salaries have kind of been increasing in general. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Here we go. Uh Uh-huh. Well, don't get too excited uh, because that all is going to come to, uh, if this is accurate, it's going to come to a, a bit of a halt here in 2024. Really? Yeah. Build me up to tear me down. I have a report here that says after years of notable salary increases fueled by worker shortage and high inflation. I don't want to hear the excuses. Uh, Give it to me. American workers are expected to receive more modest raises in 2024. In other words... If you got a big payday, your salary got bumped up in 2023, don't expect something similar to happen in 2024. Growth is slowing. Companies are recalibrating their budgets to reflect the current and expected economic environment. Don't give me the excuses. They're moving towards a more sustainable model of compensation growth. I don't want to hear it. Which means salaries, uh, wage increases, raises are going to slow down here in 2024. Like, what more is there to say? I mean, we're all disappointed. Nobody's happy. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes this. Nobody likes to hear this. I just don't want to hear the excuses about inflation. Mm -hmm. We're not making as much money. Just isn't really for me. Yeah. It is, uh, it would be easy as a company to come up with some amorphous excuses that are very hard to pin down as to why you can't give any individual a raise, even if their performance warrants it. You can be like, sorry, the numbers from the quarterly report and the t- economic uh, uncertainty in general in the industry really uh, doesn't allow for it. They'd love just throwing those words at mm-hmm. you, too. Yeah. I think I could work as a, I could base just right there, put me in a leadership position. See, I'll you, tell people why they're not getting raises. You think a lot of people who didn't get, they like a lot of people don't get like raises that happen every couple months. Yeah. Or it's not like set in stone when you're getting a raise, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's like, it's sometimes it's a surprise. Yeah. Talk about a good surprise. Yeah. Um, it doesn't get much better than that. But the, the bad part about the surprise raise uh-huh. is you're never like when are they going to answer and never giving you one yeah it's are you going to come out one time and be like hey like it's been a long time since mm-hmm. i've gotten a raise and so if you don't get like quarterly or annually raises your boss just never has to talk about it they never have to come to you and be like hey yeah, in fact you may be wondering why you haven't gotten a raise recently <laughs> it's because of this they don't have to answer for it but if you get a yearly raise mm-hmm. then when it comes around and everyone's like what the heck is going on around here when am I getting my raise? Then they have to send you an email, which doesn't make you feel any better than the Mingorian. This is uh, this is one of those uneven playing field things because what you just pointed out, think about this too. If you don't get a scheduled raise, so it's either a surprise or you have to ask for it. If you go and ask, who seems like the bad guy? You do. You. You do. You do. You greedy. Yeah. Oh, Ungrateful. Greedy. Yeah. You think you deserve a yeah. raise? Why? Yeah, that's right. Explain it to me. I'm like, Uh because I haven't gotten one in a long time. It's been a while. This is what you agreed to. I would say if I was your boss, Mm -hmm. you agreed to work here and you You agreed at these wages. And if I was the employee, I'd walk out of that office and I'd be like, I hate him. Yeah, I hate him. (laughs) But I have no other option. (laughs) But he pinned me. That's right. Up against the wall. That darn contract. It's cornered. Well, this is uh, this is what we're in for in 2024. Start preparing now. So you know I, the, the best way to get yourself a raise? What's that? Quit your job, job and get a new one. That's right. Guaranteed raise if you get another job. Bet on yourself. The dangerous 2024 we're living in. And Berlin. Hudson is the maple syrup, and Isaiah is the power protein flapjack. This is The Riot on Radio U. Check this out. About 70% of people said they partaken in dry January at some point. What, in their life or in January? Yeah, whether, whether this year or otherwise. Okay. But only 55% of 
Uh, 55% say that they did not last. If they tried a dry January, they didn't make it. So half. Yeah, about half. It's about if you if you say I'm doing dry January, not drinking throughout the whole month, it's about a 50-50 shot, it sounds like, that you'll actually make it through. And the average person that says they participated in dry January at any point makes it to about January 10th before they give up the ghost. That was like one week. Would you make it to Saturday? Yeah, not very far. Not very far. You want to hear the top reasons why people... Yeah, give me some excuses. Let's hear the excuses. Turn up the excuses. The number one reason that people said they failed at dry January is because they forgot they were participating in the first place. What? January 10th rolled around. They poured a drink, sipped it, and then they're like, wait a minute. This wasn't supposed to happen. Well, nobody buys that. You don't buy it? No, I don't buy it. What do you, why do you think they're failing? Well, because they chose to quit. They just give up? Yeah, they gave up. And then when somebody said, why'd you give up? Like, why are you drinking? I thought you were doing dry January. And then they were like, oh, yeah, I guess I am doing that. I must have forgotten. Excuse. Uh, the other, other top reasons were attending happy hours or going out on a date. 37% of people. Failed dry January because they went on a date. That's a lot of dates. Um, you think about two. No wherewithal there on a date. Uh huh. But you got a little nervous. Maybe you, that might uh, help. you wanted to. Yeah, you need a little liquid courage for the day. Uh, okay, so what we're seeing here, it is un. It's actually based off the odds, fifty five percent. It's unlikely if you uh, decided to do dry January that you're going to succeed at going the whole month. 